point zero. All right, recording. All right. All right, let's take a look at this. Just for the sake of fun, the close tolerance AN bolt comes in sizes ranging from, according to Genuine Aircraft Hardware, who is the supplier of a lot of bolts, what is the largest one you can get? 180. 180. 180. So it's neither 182 or. <laughs> wow. Wow. I feel so much better. Uh, so <laughs> that was so much answer. fun. I didn't believe any of you guys. I can sleep. So, so everything I say from here on out is just absolutely. So it is based, the diameter is based on the, uh, the number. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. <laughs> Talk oh. about bolts. What's wrong with this bolt? That's a screw. Everything about it. Yeah. What kind of bolt uses a flathead screwdriver? No, it's a dime. Some people you say number dime. one. There is no such thing as a flathead screwdriver. They're slotted. I don't care. <laughs> that's a, that's a word. Is it flat or is it not? It is. It's a flathead flat screwdriver. Flathead screwdriver. Or a slotted no, screwdriver. Or a straight blade. I don't care what you call it. Because I speak all of it. Anyway, these are clevis bolts. Something that I'm sure it's written down somewhere, but it's a thing that I sort of picked up on. Anytime you have a shank, er, not shank a, a grip section in aircraft hardware, it is some sort of structural bolt or screw. So, um, yes, you could probably call this a screw if you want to, but it's not, it's a bolt. Um, so these are similar to the uh, shear bolts we looked at before, where those shear bolts would have a rather hefty load up upon them, high strength shear bolts. We could have renamed these low strength shear bolts, I guess. You see these used a lot, especially in more antique aircraft, as the hinge for elevators and things like that. So they are subject to rotation. <clears throat> so you may have an elevate, a horizontal stabilizer, and then the elevator, and one of these is the, uh, goes through. You weld um, tubes on. Tubes are welded on each one, and the tubes all come together. And this bolts through all the little tubes that have been welded on. This becomes the hinge. So it's subject to rotation. So if it's subject to rotation, what is the rule? Right, castle nut. Castle nut. So you notice all of these have. Shank. Drill shank. Yep. Shanks. Now it doesn't have to. I think you can get them without, but then it would be an application that's not necessarily used on something that's subject to rotation. But it is used for shear loads only. So we have the clevis bolt. Let's see. Does the head make it a clevis bolt? Is the, is the, does the head make it? The, the, the fact that the head. The, the yes, the fact that it takes a screwdriver makes it a clevis bolt. Okay. Wait, so without the drill shank, would you still consider it a bolt or would it be It's a clevis bolt with the drilled shank or not. Let me see. see, shear loads only. That is the big takeaway. If you hear nothing else, that's the thing. Clevis bolt. Well, it uses a screwdriver. Not a wrench, just to help you identify. It is for shear loads mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it uses a shear nut. Not a regular nut, there's usually not enough room. These are measured out a little funny, I wrote in my notes. Make sure you rewrite this. So. Um, the diameter would be in an AN21 up to an AN20, let's see, AN36. AN36, that's the sizing that I have. So a 21, AN21 through a 23, and this is really just to help you with your projects. Again, it's not a little test. Um, these are um, screw sizes. So I could write this way. 21 is a number six screw. A 22 is a number eight screw. 
23 is a number uh, 10 screw. <coughs> and then we start over after that. So we have an AN 24 through the 36. This right here is diameter in what? Sixteenths. Sixteenths. One All right, so diameter in sixteenths. Uh, let's see, length. Length is funny on these. Length. Also in sixteenths. Not eighths. It's a little bit different. So we could have, let me see, we have an example here. <coughs> that is AN. Sometimes I find mistakes in this book. It's actually kind of interesting. AN 24 16. What would that be? 24, so that's 24 16. 4 sixteenths is how much? Quarter inch. Quarter, quarter, inch. Quarter, inch. quarter inch diameter. How long? One inch long. One inch. Because it's in? Sixteenths. Uh, my notes here in the little blue book do say that if it's designed to be used with a sheer castle nut, but if you so desire to use not a castle nut, make sure you add in oops, A. To make it uh, not drill. Not drill. Not drill. Okay. So, what kind of load is that used for? Shear. Shear load only. <coughs> eye bolts. I think what the heck would you use an eye bolt for? Well, you use a lot of them, actually. Uh, you can use it to, uh, is it kind of, you were talking about earlier, where if it's drilled on both ends, so where I see a lot of the eye bolts going back to like Satabria's um, uh, fabric covered airplanes that have uh, well, so the fabric covered the horizontal stabilizers need uh, struts usually on them. So fabric covered airplanes have struts back on the horizontal stabilizer. When you get into older airplanes, your Cubs, Satabria's, not that they're old, stuff like that you will see these eye bolts or something very similar screwed into the horizontal stabilizer. And then you'll have a flat and one on the horizontal, one on the horizontal, one on the vertical. You have a wire connecting the two. Mm -hmm. So this would screw in and then the wire would have a fitting that goes over the eye bolt and then through it would be what? A shear bolt. A shear bolt or a? A clevis pin. Clevis. Is it shear bolt? Oh my God. All right, I bolt. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of notes here. Uh, I don't even remember it. It's <laughs> AN24 Bravo to AN49 Bravo, or to 49. The Bravo, Bravo is always followed on AN42 and 43 to indicate a revision to the whole size. I mean, that is just really getting some nuance on there. Yeah, what the You'll find that here. Special stock in the catalog. Can we do that? Can we do that yeah, now? Crescent Ranch works just fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> used for external tension loads. So used for tension loads. Tension loads. Tension loads. All right, let's talk a little about head markings. So these are. Some of your standard head markings. I don't commit <coughs> these to memory. We can just kind of look at them. So the asterisk is the standard, standard, standard bolt. So I have standard, standard. What's different? I don't know. There's just some markings on there. They yeah, see that. All <laughs> and standard, and standard, and standard. So what's the common thing? The star. 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 Right there. All right. The uh, plus, plus or the X. 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 <laughs> it's also spec. Special bolt. Let me see. Oh man, I forgot. Hang on. This would be worth it. (laughs) 
Because when it says magnetically, it looks like old Pac Man eating a donut. Walk, walk, walk. Somewhere in my office, I have a very cool special bolt. It says cub on it and has a picture of a little cub. Uh, uh, Whoa. And it's aluminum. So, wow. all right. So, uh, okay, we got the drilled head bolt. Damn, well, cool. if you just if you can see all the holes coming through it, you know it's a drilled head. Uh, another so special bolt. Another special <laughs> NAS close tolerance. We also is the triangle. Uh, aluminum, marked with that. Uh, not a lot of aluminum bolts used. Uh, w, or sorry, not the M. You're looking for an M right here. Pac-Man. Magnetically Pac-Man. inspected, which means they inspect, I don't know if they inspect every one or certain percent, I think it's every one. Um, I like that. That right there looks an awful lot like that right there. <laughs> Does that one, is that the, what, what, is that, what are those, it says orange dyed magnetically, ins- oh, it's orange, oh, I get it, okay, okay. So I was thinking we'll die on it. <laughs> All right, what do we got there? I should know by the slotted screwdriver. Okay, this one is dished out, which usually means that it's NAS. Yep. Standard countersunk, eye bolt, clevis. We're only covering just a few of the bolts that are out there. There's so so many more, but these are the. Yes, kind of big ones. on those where they have like the Allen head or the uh, headset, how would they have their markings then? If you guess the marking for it, would be on the up here. But you know, what markings are you going to give it? Because it's an internal hex head, so which marking would you put? It's not a standard bolt, but it may have a, a M on it if it's magnetic part inspected. So. Special. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's do that. Um, we'll do head markings. See, we did this one, or that is normal. Um, dash, single dash. Stainless steel. What is the stainless steel bolt made out of? Chromium and steel. Chromium? Mostly stainless steel. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, well, that was a smart answer. Well, ask, what is a stainless steel bolt made out of? And it's, uh, the answer is? Stainless steel. Stainless steel. steel. All right. What color are they? Stainless steel. The color of stainless steel. The color of stainless steel. Ooh, this is a hard one. Um, Yeah. A real X. God damn it. Special. Special bolt. Did we have that up here? Special bolt. Spec. Oh, right. Well, special right here. Got the X. Okay. So, X right there. Could you also say you can mark it? But I guess that makes it an S because this 5 is right side up, therefore it's an X. It's a 5 or an S? What? It's a 5. God. I'm gonna fail. Hey, you have to memorize this all of them. I don't know. No, you do not. So, um, <laughs> triangle. Close to all the Uh Oh, you, you know this one. A double dash. Aluminium. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 2020. Aluminum. Yeah. Aluminum. Yeah. And. Yeah. Magnet. Magnetic particle inspected. What would that be useful? Like, maybe specific? You really, really want a bolt that's not bad. Okay. Critical areas. <laughs> you spent that money for it. So they basically do MBT on those bolts? Yes, not basically, actually. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's what exactly what it means. Like, inside and in. No. So where would that for anything? be used? I mean, maybe you want your prop bolts that way. All right, I have a bunch of warnings here, but warnings. Um, warning. I think you already know all of these warnings. What's the first warning when it comes to torquing? Don't over torque. 
head size and the waist size. Head size. I'm not gonna write that one down. <laughs> See, I wrote it down. Yeah, I'm not gonna still didn't it. Real nice. Head size on both sides. Uh, let me see, the, uh, yeah, then I go into why that is, we've already covered that. Um, items bolted together should not exceed the grip. Items bolted together should not exceed the grip. Or require more than one eighth inch total washers. You can't put a sixteenth under the head and an eighth down below it. It's a total total number of washers. So, there so ideally, also. you would want a little bit of the grip to poke out and you put one washer and then. There you go. One under the head. One under the. One under the. Um, Nut. Two pieces, thirty-two thousandths sheet metal, and three inches of wash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nuts. Nuts. Oh, nuts. All right, nuts. Most of the time, <coughs> nuts are also made out of cad plated steel, which is steel, but it's cad plated, which makes them what kind of color? Gold. 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 If you're going to use a corrosion resistant bolt, that means it's made out of what? Then you ought to be using washers that are made out of stainless steel. And the nut should also be made out of stainless steel. You match everything. It wouldn't make sense. Well, I'm going to need this part to be stainless. The rest of it doesn't have to be. Well, we didn't have it on the All right. Um, Nuts, um, materials. So we've got cat plated steel. Cat plated steel, which is? Gold colored. We have, cur um, where am I? oh, there we go. I've got the stainless steel. <coughs> And dichromate. Okay, chrome twice. Dichromate. No, it's not right. Um, it is olive drab. My notes say an iridescent. I don't know about that. Um, olive drab or kind of Blackish. Like Sometimes I see it. Bend mm -hmm. more color or something? Yes, exactly. <laughs> All of grab. Oh, come on. It's military three. All right, self locking nuts. What are the rules for self locking nuts? Can't be subject to rotation. Okay, not subject to rotation. And uh, not in high heat. Well, not use where there's some that are all a loose nut or bolt <coughs> or washer could get ingested in the engine. That means sucked into. right next to the engine as long as it's not by the intake. Correct. Which which says somebody doesn't believe they're always going to stay put. All right. So talk about the low temp. Kind of my word, not what they're called. The low temp. Low temp. The MS 2365s or AM 365s, the same thing, just add an MS 20, drop the AM and the MS 20. Full profile, which means they're tall. Self locking nylon insert CAD plated nut. They are good up to how many degrees? 200 degrees. 
What happens after 250 degrees? The nylon starts to melt degree. completely and fall off. The nylon starts to melt out. So I try to make it a general rule. I don't think I've read this anywhere, but anything forward of the firewall, I don't use a nylon nut. So if you looked at my plane, could I guarantee there aren't any? No, because I didn't put the engine on. So, but I didn't take the time to swap them out either. But and it's just kind of to me, it always feels a little poor practice. Um, but I'll admit there are places in the engine compartment that don't reach 250 degrees at all. I don't know which place that is, so I don't use them. So, so even if the manual called for it, you wouldn't put it on, like the. Nylon? Oh, if the manual called for it, I absolutely would follow the manual. Okay. Absolutely. So, all right, cannot be used more than 250 degrees. They work because this nylon right here, which is either green, yellow, or red, the only colors I've ever seen in aviation, are not threaded. And so when your bolt goes through there, it takes a wrench to force it through that nylon threading. The nylon has no thread, so it grips the bolt and holds it in place. So if it's white, you can tell it's not. If it's white or clear, hardware store. And the, uh, the counterpart to that, so these are used in shear or tension. tension. Okay. They're made for tension, but you can use it for a shear. Nobody's going to yell at you, oh my god, that's a shear loading, and used a little bigger nut than you should have. What, what color did you say there? Green, yellow, or red? Red. The low one, the small one, is used only for shear, yeah. shear loads. That's the 364s. I like this. The 365 is bigger and the 364 is smaller. Oh, I know, that makes sense. 364 big or small, 365. So 364, 365. They are low temp, self locking nuts, not used where they're subject to rotation, not where a uh, loss could get ingested. Um, okay. Can you reuse these? No. 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 Yeah, Absolutely you can. You, can you, can. you can't turn it by hand. 43 or you can turn it by even hand. gives you torque specs on what to do if you reuse it. Exactly. So, here's an example. I have an AN. <clears throat> oh, we use a different number. Control Z is not working. That is really weird. An MS 20 365 dash. Four, I think it's like four one. Sometimes you add the, the um, numbers in, in there. <coughs> like five one six, four one six, let's see, four. Isn't it like, I thought it was four two eight. Four two eight, it is. Sometimes it's just the four, sometimes eight. So four two eight, that's the threads. So four two eight, I have that. And I want to know if I can reuse it. Four three thirteen. Tell us about it. Remember seeing that torque chart? Has a chart. It must, in order to reuse a self locking nut, oh, yeah. it must meet the minimum prevailing torque, which is to say it must have a minimum torque to drive it on. Like, for example, um, I changed out the seat in my carburetor, and it has a, a strip of nylon on this seat, and it says right in the directions you must have a minimum of five inch pounds turning it in. So I get a small torque wrench, set it to five inch pounds, and it better click while I'm turning it in, proving that it reached five inch pounds while it's going in. So same thing. We're going to give you a chart and say, well, you could set your torque wrench for this thing, and this number, and when you start it and you get to that nylon part, the wrench better click before you start putting it on. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. So given that, we can reuse so can I reuse my AM, uh, MS 2365-428? I want to reuse it. I just want to know what the minimum prevailing torque is. Here is the chart out of 4313. Can I use it, reuse it, yes or no? Yes. yes. As long as it meets that requirement. What is the minimum torque that I must have for my MS 2364? And by the way, what is a MS-236? Uh, it's a quarter 28. It's a quarter 28. So we got a quarter 28. And so what is the minimum torque on that? Doesn't say. Not there. Not yeah. there. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, we'll go up to, uh, what's my next size then? 7, 16, 20. No, what comes after quarter inch? 
Five eight, five eight. Five well, can I reuse my five sixteenths? What is the minimum torque for my five sixteenths? Less than eight inches. Oh, uh, well, you guys are no help. Okay, well, I'll try my three eighths. Now, how about my three eighths bolt? What's the minimum torque there? Less than eight inch pounds. <laughs> <laughs> At least eight. Are uh, you following what I'm, so I'm laying down here for you? Yeah. Yeah. Not on the chart. No data. No data, no data. Don't use it. So you have absolutely no data. So you were 100% correct that, and, and according to 4313, in order to reuse a self-locking nut, it must meet the minimum prevailing torque value for which they give you absolutely no data for quarters, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, um, 3 eighths, 3, 5, um, higher, higher an engineer so. to prove that you can... And, do the data so you can use it. So according to 4313, could we reuse any of these bolts? No. No. That's, no. All right. What is the industry practice, the norm, if you will? Probably finger just tight. keep going for it. <laughs> if, if, finger tight. If it's, if it's finger tight, it's bad. If you can put it on with your fingers, yeah. it is bad. That is the norm, the industry standard. Is there any data for that? No. <laughs> the airplanes are not out of the sky yet. <laughs> if, if you, I don't want to say the FAA because that's not fair to them. If you had a mechanic examiner standing over you, what would you do? I would want to be 14 and uh, get a like I, I saw in the book. Yep, that, that looks like replacing hardware time. Best case, I would quote this and say, well, according to 4313, as long as this nut meets the minimum prevailing torque, I can reuse it. However, sir or ma'am, there is no minimum prevailing torque for anything under the 716 size. Therefore, I must use a new one. Or take your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so off the record, what would I do? Number one, I would look at the application. If this is holding on a critical component, that the loss of one nut could mean the life or death of somebody, you get a damn new nut. That is just a fact. How much do they cost? They're dirt cheap when it compared to how much time of your life you spent sitting in this seat. <laughs> so I would not hesitate. I keep a bunch in my hangar. I do not hesitate to throw them away or, or you know, throw them in another box to use for the, the tug that pulls the aircraft in and out. So I, I will not hesitate to replace it quickly. If it's, you know, something that's holding the uh, an air tube that's, you know, pointing to my feet or something, and I don't care. I'll reuse that nut to the cow skin. It just doesn't matter. You know, that falls off when the little air tube is, you know, it doesn't matter. So I'll take it with that. You might get cold. That's kind of my thing. I might get hot. I might get cold. All right, so minute, that's when we can reuse them. You follow? Yes. All right. High temp. These are called the high temp self-locking nuts, but they're high temp only up to 120 degrees. So could I use these on my exhaust system? Probably no. no. It depends on what? If the airplane's running or not? Yeah. <laughs> it's a static display? Depends on how hot it gets. The exhaust system on my airplane gets. Uh, Is that 2000? I was going to say 1800. My, not quite that much. My exhaust gas temps that far from the um, cylinder run about 1400 degrees. So the nut that is that much away from the probe up here attached to the cylinder is well, just the way it's hitting in air and stuff probably isn't that hot but i would say it's safe to say 1800 to 2000 degrees so would this meet that criteria no. <laughs> so it's a low temp high temp nut do they make a very high temp they do okay. they're not cad plated because what happens at 450 degrees the cad, 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 the cad plating bakes into the base metal and becomes extremely brittle mm. Mm. yes is this one of those things where uh, when it went from AM to MS, um, it didn't quite get the right treatment, or it didn't get the treatment where it's like the just 20 and then you have the numbers at the end? Because yeah, it like it's, uh, instead of being 2363, it's 21045. Yes. No, they did do that. You just can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> they added, they just added more than 20. Yeah. <laughs> How does it self-lock? Well, they've got a little, they've got a guy, and, he's, and he has a hacksaw, and he hacksaws those right there, and then he pinches them in with a pair of vice grips. Is that why when it gets too hot, he just, he gets off? I beg your pardon? Stop the court, stop the court, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> right, so I do not think that they make these in uh, sheer nuts. I don't think. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Um, I will show you a funny nut a little bit ago that I would have never thought they would have made. But uh, So, okay, there's that. Um, I think you said you use these exclusively on the helicopters. Oh, I yeah, refer these to these as a reduced diameter nut, just for lack of a better term. Bread and butter. You call them bread and butter? No, they were on bread and butter. <laughs> they were very, it's not very, not very tasty. No, they They're were. not. So I'm glad you said that because it does look like a flange nut, but it's not. This right here takes a wrench that is two sizes oh, smaller. Okay. Than it would have otherwise normally used. Look at the wall thickness between here and there. Super yeah. small. Very, very tiny. So you use a very small wrench. So the wrench sizes aren't um, compatible. Let me see. So my, yeah, on, on my my airplane, for whatever reason, they use these to hold the back seat in. So on one side with the full bolt head, they're using a 7 16 so they're a quarter inch. On the back yeah. side, it's a 5 16 Yeah, it's, 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 a full, yeah. it's a full eighth inch smaller instead of a 16th inch yep. smaller. For tool clearance or something like that? Almost the bolt. Not even. Uh, you know, I don't really know what their purpose is. If it's a, if it's a weight saving purpose, if it's... I think if they made it thicker, it would be harder for it to form fit. So they made the wall super thin, so that way it's easier okay. for it to flex. So some of these are form-fitted, right? They're squeezed in a little bit. Yeah, if you look at it, it's like an egg shape. Yeah, and so as the bolt goes through, it misforms. So you have to be careful about reusing these. So they also make these in uh, nut plates, which, well, we'll get to that one. So is that the self-locking nut then? <coughs> it is. It is by, by crimp, reasons of crimp. What's the name of that? I call it a reduced diameter that. nut. They call it an MS-21046. <laughs> they call it bread and butter. Yeah. <laughs> and I threw this in here just to say, we talked about high temperature nuts. This is a true high temperature nut. This is continental exhaust nut. They're a brass or bronze material. Uh, they are not self-locking. They're very tall. They're surprisingly yeah. tall. Um, and so you would, um, I'm not saying continental, um, some of the applications, they don't use anything but the nuts. It just goes right up on there. I have to look at the manual. That's, so, That's what it said for mine. Yeah. It didn't say use washers. There's no washers, there's no lock washers. It's just mm -hmm. two, or, two or four of them, depending on the system. And high torque? Are they not safety? No, no safety. No, no, no. It's just the way the brass seems to interact <coughs> with the... Uh, the metal and the fact that they're tall, you can't put them on by hand. I don't know why. I mean, you start them by hand, but they always kind of yeah. Going up yeah. On. It could be the metal expands because of the heat inside of the nut. Yeah, it makes, yeah. It, it makes it snug. Like the difference of like different metals expand differently. Light combing doesn't do it this way. Light combing uses a uh, high temperature, more like stainless steel nuts and lock washers. So, all right, we have the oh, and yeah. unfortunately for castellated nuts, they went backwards. Three ten is the big nut, 320 is the small. So all right, so we have AM310 tension castle nuts. Notice how the cotter pin is cut before it reaches the end of the diameter, and you can see back here it does not go down and touch the base metal or washer. So those are our castellated nuts. We already talked about what happens, if, how to put a castle on, right? You start with the lowest torque. Work to the highest gravity. Work to the highest. If the cotter pin doesn't line up, change your washer, add a washer, change the nut, change the bolt. When's the next castle convention? <laughs> they I told you that. They had well, like they had it scheduled during COVID, and then well, when are they going to reschedule? When is the next one? Yeah. Well, it was supposed to be held in uh, no, I'm not gonna February. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing here? Yeah. When when are you not available? That's yeah. when it's scheduled. We were going to have it in San Francisco yesterday, but you know. All right, AM320 is the small ones. Look at, there's hardly any threads at all. The nice thing about 320s is if you make a mistake and over torque, they let you know. They have a unique feature whereby they get very smooth. <laughs> They're only used for sheer applications. Then, 
Why? Yeah, okay. I was gonna ask you that. I actually had a student one time, Joe, and he said, well, I don't, if they're really concerned about this, they should make a castellated self-locking nut. And I looked it up, I'm like, holy crap. They, they do. This is not a joke. This is for real. Tell me if you've ever used one of those. I've never seen one. I've never heard of one. Somebody just said it as a joke, and I typed it in. Dude, like, they actually make it there's up. one in my bolt bin, and I was looking at it like, me and Bolt, Adam were both just like, the hell is this thing? <laughs> I've seen those on You didn't yeah, look them over and go, what the hell? Write down that number. number. You need that number. <laughs> you so I, I've racked my brain. Why? So that it doesn't come undone while you're looking for a cotter pin. Um, they assume that you're too stupid to get a cotter pin. What if you forget? At least you have a nylock. I just, I don't know. It's just it's safe. It's Maybe, All right. Maybe so we go back to nuts. For the most part, right? Self-locking feature is the crimp. Self-locking feature is the nylon. Crimp, crimp. Not really sure. I think it's the thread pitch that might do it because they just they do not go on well. So they may slightly pitch them different. I'm just making up something right now. So that they, because. I, I, I read about it and it was something about brass and the interaction of the okay. of the steel. I I because I was hella confused about that. Yeah, too. and they, I've never seen them come off even though I look for them all the time. Okay, cotter pin, cotter pin, both. everything, <laughs> everything. All right, so now we get into just plain old nuts. Lock wash. We have the thick and the thin. So the thick is going to be used for tension, tension, and the small is for shear. We could say it this way. Thin is for shear only. only. What about the thick? Anything, Both. Anything. Shear or tension. Doesn't matter. You can use a thick for shear. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's everything in the world wrong with using a thin for uh, tension. Just two thins. Thin. Two thins. Three thins if you really want to be careful. So this is going to require what to safety it? A lock washer. A lock washer. All right. Or a... Yeah, I had a hard time finding a palmet picture because we just don't use it very often. I remember reading in the uh, the parts the parts book, yeah. the illustrated parts manual, it was saying, oh yeah, these used to be super common, but now they're hard to find. Good luck. This is an interesting thing here to look at this. I've never looked at it in this light before. Uh, this is called a hind joint. There's a ball bearing in there, and I think I have a picture yeah. coming up. Cessna does have an airworthiness directive that a large washer goes on the opposite side in case that bearing breaks, this housing won't slide over the bolt head. This right here is a what kind of nut? Oh, that's that uh, reduced size. Reduced diameter nut reduced that diameter. is self locking with a helmet on top with. Nope. Some, I promise I torqued it. Yes, with uh, <laughs> torque. <laughs> then, I promise I torqued it. <laughs> this heim joint is screwed into this apparatus here. That is called a witness hole. The witness hole must be, you try, you try to get a piece of safety wire in there. You <coughs> should not be able to. And that tells you that this piece that is threaded is engaged in the threads to at least below the hole. If it's out here, it means this part is screwed out too far, and that's unacceptable thread engagement in here. So if it goes in between the threads, basically, like through the hole? Like if your safety wire goes through the hole, it means the bolt is too far up. Oh, okay. And so if it's proper engagement, it won't go, the safety wire won't go into the witness hole. So this is threaded, and it's common to have a jam nut on top of that. So the jam nut and these threads lock in this. Never in my life have I seen the jam nut safety with the palmet. So there's three say. sets of threads on here. <laughs> so. hey, Very does, important. Does this, so we had something similar, again, Huey, where almost the exact same setup, just we use cotter pins instead, and it would lean, and it would wear unevenly on that idler portion. So you had the, the set, I can't remember the name of it, but you'd set it in, you run your bolt through, and then the moment you tied it all together, it tilt, and it would just. What, does that happen on stuff like that? Or? Uh, you know, I, I'm fixed wing guy. Everything up with us is symmetrical. So for the most part. 
All right, so we got to have washers. I like to just call the AN960, that makes sense. You can see how the AN960, how did they get NAS 1149? I don't know what kind of mathematical calculation they did, but those are the same. We are moving away from the AN960s and calling the NAS washers now. You just have to learn to live with it. I have to learn to live with it. All right, standard thickness CAD plated washer. And then we have the AN960Ls, which stands for light. They are half the thickness. That's what L means. So if you don't get enough thread engagement with the thick, then you go to thin. You know, that's something I don't think I did mention. When you are using self-locking nuts, uh, self-locking nuts, you must have, <coughs> this is all self-locking nuts, so you must have a minimum of one full thread. For self-locking, you said? Yep, showing past the nut. Now, I, I want to swear to you, when I went through school, it was three threads for nylon and one thread for the high temp. And I can't find that anywhere. And there was a point where I thought, I mean, I just, I, may, I must be remembering it wrong. And then when I was working with my, my friend Nathan, and I said something, we did something, and I'm like, well, there's enough threads. You have, you have one. He said, because you mean three. I said, no, it's actually one. He's like, I thought it was three. And I'm like, I used to too, but it really says one. I showed him in the book. I see it says one. He's like, I already know. Mm. I learned it as three. I'm like, I did too. That's so. That's uh, Mandela yeah, yeah. Effect. What's that? Mandela effect. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So, so yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So NAS 1149 standard versus 1149 light. They just they are just like, oh, we're too lazy. They'll figure it out. Um, no, because I know you were just working on this. It had some. I think it has something to do with the dash number after that for the light. It's. It, it, I used it's AN. Like a, a, a abbreviation or some crazy yeah, thing. Yeah, some, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Order it and help you get which one you need. I'm working off the AN960 and AN960 light. If you want to make me happy, you'll do that. But anyway, they're kind of plated. Uh, let's see. And these are the uh, automotive people call them fender washers. Yeah. <laughs> Aviation people call them large area washers. So they're rather Ooh. large. And lock washers. All right, we have two, well, we could say three types of lock washers in aviation. We have the split lock that I stole here from www.laserarrow.com. If you want lock washers, you can call the fine people at laserarrow.com and they will help you out. They were nice enough to let me steal pictures from them. Uh, it's hard to find pictures that are big enough you can see them. You can reuse these. I know I'm not writing a lot of stuff down, I'm sorry. These are reusable if you can see the little spring effect in there where they're offset. If they're flat, then you cannot reuse them. Oh, that followed the damn notes that uh, I did write. You must have at least one full thread, not so rotation, not temp, like that, breath, castellated. Washers. Washers almost always used under the part to protect, under the nut to protect the part from being damaged by the rotating nut. Uh, washers, washers, washers. When you use lock washers, do you think that you want this digging into the very expensive aluminum part of that aircraft? No. no. So what goes under it? Another, Another washer. washer. Another 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 washer. 